Hello, welcome to the Basketball Soapbox. I'm your host, Daniel Daly. Um, as we wrap up this year, um, long year of basketball, a lot of stuff to talk about, especially over the last week. Um, I'm going to be talking about how Kevin Durant's frustration in Phoenix has been picking up a little bit there. Um, as well as around the NBA, have an MVP candidate down there in Oklahoma City, a uh, returning Chicago Bull at some point. Uh, the struggling play of Steph Curry over the last couple of games and a little worrisome for the Golden State Warriors. Um, and also looking at the Detroit Pistons, who finally got a win tonight. And finally, the R.J. Barrett and O.G. Ananobi trade uh, that went down yesterday. Uh, so we're going to be looking off that. But first, let's kick off with the Boston Celtics here, um, who have been – on a streak of impressive play over the last 11 games here um, since the in-season tournament. Uh, you got right there uh, them beating a list of cl cluster of teams after the in-season tournament after dropping the, the game in the in-season tournament to the Indiana Pacers, um, who were in the finals of the in-season tournament, the first ever in-season tournament. But after that, the Boston Celtics picked up right back off, uh, picking up a win against the New York Knicks, obviously. The New York Knicks are always going to be tough and battleless. They also just made a trade, so I'll be talking about that later. Um, and then we had some two, a couple back-to-back -back games there with Cleveland and with Orlando, which Orlando, I'm, Cleveland, we kind of handle a little bit there. And I, we didn't see the double bigs of, of Cleveland in either game with Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. Of course, Evan Mobley going to be in out for, I believe, eight to ten weeks um, going on with surgery there. Uh, but more so looking at the Orlando side of things, Orlando has always been a thorn in our side. For whatever reason, when we go down there, they seem to just give us a hassle. And even they won the first matchup against us this year. Uh, but the Celtics handled that pretty well. So they start off that streak of 5-0. and um, Then going out to the west side, they're going out to Sacramento and laying the hammer on them. Going into those couple games. There against the LA, the LA teams, the Clippers, uh, of course, without Kawhi, but we handled our business there. And then on Christmas Day, beating the Lakers, um, which was nice. Uh, and then in the last couple of games, a dog fight between the Detroit Pistons, who were in that midst of the 27 game win, uh, losing streak. Um, we made it 28. <laughs> and at some point, it didn't look like it was going to be that, especially when we were down 21 points in that game. Um, ended up pulling that out. Um, late game heroics. Same thing with Toronto, late game heroics. Um, two tough games back to back. The one game that didn't sit right with me was the Golden State Warriors game, just because of the NBA Finals. They beat us in the finals uh, a couple of years ago in 2022. And then looking at how we just have some demons in that building, and just how that game we just broke down down at the back end of the game, uh, towards the end of the game, and just wasn't able to execute and get the win there. So other than that. Though the games that I wanted, especially was the Orlando games, because they've been playing us tough. Uh, the West Coast games, of course, that we just want to, I just want to be dominant in the West Coast because that's the, really the first big road trip of the season for the Celtics. And then you look at the LA games, especially I want to beat the LA teams, especially the Lakers on Christmas Day. Um, but that Golden State Warriors game, we just didn't get. And of course, people are going to start complaining and look at other stuff and be like, hey, we should have got that game. We're not executing, we're shooting too many threes. But we have to be realistic here. And looking at the Boston Celtics, what they've been able to do, they're second in the league in scoring at 127 points per game, as you see there, as well as six in three-point shooting percentage. I think we take the most threes in the league, though, but we're six in field goal uh, three-point shooting percentage, so we're hitting our threes, which is good. And another thing that I like is especially the rebounding by the Celtics, especially from Jason Tatum, Porzingis, Jalen Brown. Um, Drew Holiday is getting involved in the rebounding there. And then we have Nemes Quinta uh, off the bench who has been picking it up, especially had a good uh, showing on the West Coast trip, I believe, around seven and six. Um, seven point six rebounds on the road there during his play. So that's good that the Celtics are actually rebounding and ending possessions on that side. The, the, another thing that I want to point out is the assist. We're 12th in the league over the last 11 games with assist, an assist with 27.2. We were teetering towards the lower – a uh, third of the league at 20 overall on the season. But the last 11 games, we've been able to build up and get to at least nearly average top half of the league. So that's a good thing for the Celtics where it's not so much iso ball. There's a lot more ball movement. Tatum's passing. Brown is passing. Um, Derek White is passing. Drew Holiday. There's so many options that the Celtics have where they can create where everybody does have a matchup that favors them, but they don't have to score every time. They can pass around, move the ball, get some other guys involved. Uh, which is definitely a good sign for the Boston Celtics moving forward, which that hasn't always been a strength in the past of the Boston Celtics in terms of moving the ball. It's been a lot of ISO play, 
But looking upon the last 11 games, we've been able to move the ball and get some wins there. And also rim protection um, from an unexpected source who I'll be talking about in a minute, uh, Porzingis um, protecting the rim there, and Derek White, who I'm going to move on and talk about right now at this current moment. And people have been clamoring for all-star Derek White. And at first I was kind of like, I don't know if he's going to make it in terms of just because of the pecking order of the Boston Celtics, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, I'm pretty sure they're going to be favored in there. But when you look at the guards play out in the East, you have Damian Lillard still. People are going to look at him, especially with fan votes, especially with the the uh, Bucks record and him being a vocal point of that team. Uh, Jalen Brunson for New York. Uh, Trey Young is having an impressive season, even though his team is not winning as much. Um, then you got Jalen Brown, who's probably going to be considered the forward, forward or a guard. However, they're going to pick it out there. And just looking around, you got Darius Garland. What about Donovan Mitchell? There's a lot of guards in pecking orders. And Tyrese Maxey is also another candidate there who's a little bit more point of a vocal point in their offense. But Derek White over the last 11 games, 20.7 points per game, 5.3 assists per game, 4 rebounds a game, 2.1 blocks as a guard. Just saying that's impressive. That's <laughs> Michael Jordan territory, Dwayne Wade territory, just guards who just got blocks in my mind. And I'm just thinking of like guards that got blocks. And I'm not saying that Derek White is Michael Jordan or Dwayne Wade. I'm just saying in terms of blocks. And I think uh, Eric Bledsoe used to be this way as well early in his career when he was a little bit more athletic and stuff like that. And these guys that just get blocks out of nowhere and it's off second chance effort, third chance effort recoveries. Um, all the stuff from Derek White that you're just getting all the intangibles from him, and you're also getting 1.5 steals a game, 51% shooting from the field, and 40 plus 40% shooting from three. And Derek White just does all the little things that the Celtics definitely really needed, and especially when you think about what uh, Marcus Smart brought to the table in that case. But in terms of offense, offensive side of the ball, and what he's able to do is just a, a step up, especially with shooting the ball, ball handling a little bit more. Uh, mindful of the passing, along with uh, Drew Holiday in the backcourt, who I'll also talk about. But looking at what Derek White has been able to do for the Boston Celtics this season has just been impressive. And to see him take on this role, uh, management wanted him to step up and be uh, have a more uh, control on the game, have a little bit more input, a little bit more involvement. And that has paid off in spades. And ever since the trade was made, we like the trade that he was brought here. Um, from San Antonio, and just to bring up his shooting, his ball handling, all the little things, all the dirty plays that he does uh, for the Boston Celtics, and even when he shoots badly, he finds a way to impact the game, which we saw in Toronto, uh, the Toronto game there the other night. And I was looking around thinking, and I tried to find an NBA comparison to Derek White, and I'm sitting there thinking – Maybe he's a less athletic version of Sean Marion or uh, uh, Andre Karolinko, Alvin Robertson, uh, who played for the Spurs and Bucks back in the day. And I asked the group that I'm in sitting talk, and somebody said, C. Mills, um, said Ron Harper. He said some other names, but Ron Harper was the guy that stuck out to me because I'm like, He's not as athletic as Ron Harper, but in terms of what he's able to do in terms of being a, uh, uh, being able to run an offense, being able to score, um, being able to play defense the way he is, being able to block shots, get steals. Ron Harper was that type of player. Um, some other people said Mono Ginobili, and I was like, nah, Mono Ginobili is too herky-jerky. Um, but we landed on uh, Ron Harper, uh, who played for Cleveland and went to L.A. and, of course, won championships with the Bulls. Um and it was just tough finding a comparison. I felt like that was the right one to go with because I just felt like those kind of a line where it's not, and especially when Ron Harper was in Cleveland behind Mark Price and Brad Dartrey, you're not sitting there looking at him as the main scorer, but he was that he was another guy in that option with those two guys when they ran their pick and roll that can create guard, still fill in, still create on the offensive end, play hard defense, guard the best player on the defensive end, especially for that uh, Cleveland team. And that's when I think about Derek White. He's not a, he's not a – I don't know if he's an all-star. He's playing like it. But in terms of his role on the team behind Brown and Tatum and Porzingis, you can even say he's probably the third option in that just because of the impact that he has on the game over the course of the game and his fingerprints all over the game. And just paying kudos to Derek White and his play, um, stepping up, being stellar. 
Um, and I don't know if anybody saw this coming. We saw uh, creeps of it, and especially just building off his uh, run last year, um, especially with that tip hit against Miami to force a game seven in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, and just looking at Derek White, it's just impressive, and he's been impressive. And if the Celtics have the best record heading into the All Star break, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Excuse me, I wouldn't be surprised if Derek White gets some All Star consideration, especially the way he's playing, um, the point output, uh, the creation output, the defensive side of the ball, and the efficiency. It's going to be hard to keep him out of the All Star game if he continues to play like this. Um, let's move on to Jalen Brown over the last eleven games: twenty four point three points per game, four point six assists per game. 4.9 rebounds on 50% shooting from the field and 38% shooting from the three. And of course, everybody came into this season questioning Jalen Brown's contract. That was the big naming thing. Everybody was like, you can't let him walk, but do you want to pay him max money? All this other stuff. And of course, the start of the season kind of started out slow, trying to find his way into the offense and kind of try to put his foot on the pedal there. And playing with the additions of Drew Holiday, playing with the additions of Christoph Porzingis, who he has a nice little two-man game with, which kind of bumped up Jalen Brown's assist a little bit. Um, Jalen Brown has answered the call in that recent stretch of play, uh, with his recent stretch of play here, playing really well, um, being aggressive, and especially in that Toronto game where uh, Jason Tatum was out, Christoph Porzingis was out, Al Horford was out. All our usual suspects over the course uh, the course of the season were out. He stepped up. And that's what you paid him to do, right? You expect him to be, one, a secondary scorer. On some nights, he's going to be the number one option um, just because he's behind Jason Tatum in the pecking order a little bit. But you have two guys that can go get buckets, and Jalen Brown has been able to do that. Turnovers aren't as erratic as it usually was in the past that people have been creating. He's been going left. <laughs> so all these little things that people have criticized, and it's like, well, in the web of the Boston Celtics, Jalen Brown's playing his role perfectly. He's shooting well from the field. He's being efficient. He's guarding. And we have to stop trying to find something to nitpick with these guys. As one of their one of the better teams in the league. <laughs> they're one of the top, they're in top five on offense and defense with guys playing really well. And especially with the impressive play of Derek White, Jalen Brown, Christoph Porzingis, uh, Drew Holiday, who I'll get into in these guys in a little bit. But the way that people have tried to criticize and beat up Jalen Brown, I feel like he's gotten that out of his head, and now he's just playing basketball. And it's very, very, very good to see, and it's paying dividends. And when the Celtics are clicking like this, you have a starting five that's playing really well, and Jalen Brown's a part of it. It's always good. And I, I don't think people should continue to nitpick. Obviously, there's going to be a question of what's going to happen during the postseason. But right now, I just want the Celtics to continue to build, and Jalen Brown has been tremendously part of that uh, moving forward. Um, and, of course, going back to Celtics fans who keep trying to nitpick, uh, Jason Tatum, there was a report on Instagram. I think it was from, I don't know if it was Celtics Media or CL, CLNS. Um, I believe that's the, the, the Sports casting for the Boston Celtics. I can't remember the clip, but somebody was just sitting there saying everyone else is playing well, but it seems like Jason Tatum's regressing and all this other stuff. And people are just basically complaining about how he's shooting and how he's not being as efficient. Stop. <laughs> the Celtics are winning. Let's just get that out the way. First of all, the Celtics are winning. They've been they're a little they're ten and one in their last eleven games. They have the best record in the NBA at I believe twenty five and six. And looking at the rest of the league where the Eastern Conference is, where Milwaukee is struggling with uh, their defensive side of the ball, at least for those things, especially with Damian Lillard integrating him, trying to find Chris Milton, get his footing back. Um, Cleveland in, the midst, uh, in disarray, with, especially with all the rumblings of, of Donovan Mitchell trying to leave um, injuries to Jared Allen. Evan Mobley, Orlando is a young pesky team moving up. New York Knicks just make a trade who we'll talk about at some point. Um, the Indian Pacers have been struggling after the in-season tournament. Everybody needs to chill out. Now, if Jason Tatum was being aggressive and playing like shit and not impacting the game, then I would be like, all right, patience, we, he's, he's fucking up. But the one thing 
that you want a superstar to do. If their shot is not falling, find another way to impact the game. He's doing that defensively. He's doing that moving the ball, passing the ball, rebounding the ball, finding other ways to impact the game. And he's still the leading scorer of the Boston Celtics at 25.7 points we get. So if people are going to try to sit here and nitpick and be like, oh, well, he's not playing like a Luka or he's not playing like an SGA or a, a Joker or anything like that. Jason Tatum is Jason Tatum. He's not those guys. <laughs> those guys play a different style of game than Jason Tatum is. Jason Tatum is a scorer. He's finding his playmaking ability. He's hitting the boards. He's playing good defense. And he's leading the Boston Celtics. And when his shot's not falling, he's finding other ways to impact the game. I don't know necessarily know if you can say that about everybody else in the league who's considered a superstar where they make other things happen. If Luka's not scoring, it's pretty tough. Yes, he can play and make and stuff like that, but that's not going to happen. Joker can do that. He finds other ways to impact the game. SGA, of course, both sides of the ball, and I'll be talking about him later. But Jason Tatum is finding other ways to impact the game for the Boston Celtics, and I think that's something that you wouldn't have said a couple of years ago where, yeah, you have the defense and stuff like that, but it's like can you get that playmaking? In your game. And I think that we've seen it over the course of this season, a little bit of last season, but he's picking it up this season where other guys are filling in that void and stepping up and scoring on their end. So looking at what Jason Tatum's is bringing to the table, everyone chill out. Everyone chill out. <laughs> Stop all this stuff about trying to crap on Jason Tatum. The Boston Celtics are the best in the league with him not playing the best in terms of shooting the basketball. His three ball just needs to go up. That's pretty much real, what it really is. He's shooting abysmal from three. But he's getting to the line. <laughs> he's scoring. He's rebounding. He's passing. Leave Jason Tatum alone. Like, stop all this nonsense of this little chatter and trying to find friction within the Boston Celtics because we have to nitpick. Now, if there's anything I need to nitpick, is just finding another scorer off the bench. Peyton Pritchard has been playing well. Um, Sam Hauser has been shooting the ball well. Al Horford has been good in the reserve role. I don't like when he starts, but in the reserve role, he's been pretty good. Um, Nemes Quinta has stepped up. Luke Cornett <laughs> had 20 and 8 the other night against the Toronto Raptors. Um, but I just want a consistent score off the bench. And that's what I've been starting to see. O'Shea Brissett and uh, Banton. Uh, we're looking at those guys. I'm, tr I'm trying to see who's going to step up between those two. But as far as the Boston Celtics go, that's the only question mark I have for this team. They play defense really well, they play offense pretty well, they're shooting the three ball pretty well. Um, Christoph Porzingis has looked great, uh, 23 points per game, eight rebounds and nearly two blocks a game for Christoph Porzingis on um, uh, good shooting splits. Drew Holiday at four, uh, nearly at 15 points per game, uh, nearly nearly uh, four assists a game and shooting on 50-50 splits from the field. So you're getting this type of efficiency from nearly everybody on the field. Once Jason Tatum starts clicking, it's going to get scary for the league. And I don't know if somebody can stop us. I don't know if anybody's going to stop the Boston Celtics, if they can continue to go on this pace. And then if we add somebody at the trade deadline, buy a market that can impact this team off the bench, it's going to get scary. It's going to be the Boston Celtics lose, and I already feel like that. But let's see how the season continues to progress. But Boston Celtics fans, enjoy the ride. Stop trying to find something wrong. Of course, people are going to nitpick at the three. That's just what this era is. People are going to sit there and be like, oh, the people shoot too many threes. The league shoots threes. <laughs> let's just... Let's just understand what that is. But overall, stop nitpicking on Jalen Brown. Stop nitpicking on Jason Tatum. These guys are leading the Boston Celtics. And enjoy the ride. They're number one in the Eastern Conference. We're playing really well. And if we can just find another guy off the bench, I feel even more confident about the Boston Celtics and their uh, championship aspirations in June.